Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night. Um, I also want to thank Pastor for letting me speak tonight um, and having the confidence in letting me speak tonight. Um, and I know tomorrow's New Year's Eve, so I wanted to speak on uh, New Year, New Chance. So if we could go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 31, and I'll be reading through verse 35. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet Yet I yet will I never be offended. And now in verse 34 and 35 is really what I'm preaching out of. But I wanted you to get the context from that. And in verse 34 it says, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say, un, I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. In verse 35, Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. And what I get out of those verses, especially 34 and 35, is Jesus was telling Peter that he would deny him three times. And the chances Peter received from Jesus over just a period of time was, first, he, became, he was able, he had the chance to become a disciple. He had the chance to talk to crowds about speaking in ton- tongues after denying God or Jesus. And the definition of second chance is an opportunity to try something again after failing. And most of us in our lives have had second chances. Jesus tells Peter that he would deny him more than once before the morning after the supper, after the last supper. And to me, this would worry me. To Peter, he said, no, God, no Jesus, I will never deny you. I would rather die. But after the Last Supper, they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And most people, like myself, like I just said, would, would worry. Most people in our church, if Jesus told them, you're, you're going to deny me, well, that scares me because I never want to deny God. But even though Peter knew of what Jesus said, he did not worry about it. While at the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell asleep twice. And... Even after falling asleep, God came to him and said, and he still fell asleep. Like, why, why are you sleeping? I asked you to watch, but he fell asleep. We have all had times where we have been told different things and didn't even think anything of it. Peter never believed that he would deny Jesus, so he didn't worry about it. We all believe in the good times that there's no reason for me to worry about something because I don't need to worry. I'm I'm in the best time of my life. But in the bad times, we don't realize that we are sleeping while we shouldn't be. We, we don't think about, well, during the good times, Jesus told me I'm going to face a battle. Well, that was during the good times, and now I don't worry about it. And now when I'm in the bad times, I forget. And you read in Matthew 26, verse 69 through 75, and it says, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them, That that were there, the fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou, art, thou also art one of them, for thy speech berileth thee. And then verse 74, Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew, crew, crow. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. You read that and you see at the very end of this, at the very end of those verses, he remembers what happened during the good times. While he was in at the last supper with Jesus and he tells him, no, I'd rather die. 
But then the bad times come along, and that's after Jesus was taken. And when those bad times come along, we don't realize what happened in the good times will affect the bad times. Peter knew what Jesus said, but didn't worry about it. Instead, he forgot about it. Now, I will tell you my wife is here, and I am going to tell a story about my wife. But me and my wife, we do not worry about the same things at all. I worry about paying bills, even though we've never once had issues paying our bills. I still worry about it. But there's a specific bill that we often... Both of us often forget about, but I'll keep reminding her to pay that bill, and she still will forget it because she's not worried about it. To me, I'll never forget that bill again because I worry that we're going to forget to pay it. But it goes to the back of her mind. And this is what happened to Peter when when Jesus told him that he would deny him. He didn't worry about it. He forgot about it. It went to the back of his mind. Throughout our lives, we all receive different chances. With my family and my parents especially, I received numerous chances over my life. Numerous. I can remember when my dad would ask me to do something, and I would do the exact opposite. But the next time it rolled around, he'd ask me to do it again. And that time I would do it because he was giving me that second chance. In Acts 2.13 verse 14, we see that it says in verse 13, others mocking said these men are full of new wine. And just reading that verse, you're just, it doesn't really give you any context of what's going on. But you look at verse 14, and I want to, the first two words, but Peter. We have already seen, I've already told you about what Peter just did. Peter denied, Peter denied Jesus three times. But it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. And it goes on, and he speaks to all this crowd of people. But you got to think, why did he receive that chance? Did he deserve to receive that chance after denying God three or Jesus three times? We do not realize that how many chances we receive from God on a daily basis. Jesus gave Peter that chance, even knowing that he denied him. But he knew that he could give him this chance because he knew he would, after failing, he knew that giving him a second chance would be okay because he knew he could do it. And I, I told you just a minute ago, I've received numerous chances from my family alone. But I've also received numerous chances from God. Even though, and I've told this story before, but even though I've sat on a pew my whole life, that doesn't mean I've been in church my whole life. I don't believe just because you're sitting on a pew and you're in a san- and you're in the sanctuary doesn't mean you're in church. When I was in college, I did things that I shouldn't have. And as you can see, I'm getting a second chance. Just by being up here, I'm, I've been given a second chance. But also other things like while praying, And I I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you before, but I'll be praying in a church service, and all of a sudden you get laid on your heart to go pray for a certain individual. Well, you open your eyes, and that person looks either mad or someone's already praying for them. So you think to yourself, well, God, I'll do it next time. But God's not asking you to do it next time. He's asking you to do it that time. But just like Peter failed, God will understand from your past, from then to now. But we must realize that our chances don't last forever. We are going into 2021, and honestly, I know my family is not looking back because we are so ready for 2020 to be over. But throughout the years, you always hear the saying, new year, new me. And so... Hearing that saying, I, I looked up that saying, and you can't really find where that saying came from, but you can find out where the New Year resolutions come from. So according to history.com, New Year's resolutions actually came from ancient Babylonians 4,000 years ago. And 
they actually celebrated it in mid-March when the crops were planted. The the Babylonians had several things included in their New Year's celebration. It was a massive 12-day religious festival, also known as Akitu, if that is how you say it, I believe it is. And then they also crowned a new king, or they reaffirmed their loyalty to the current king. And then lastly, they would make promises to their pagan gods, and this is where the New Year's resolution came from, is when they made those promises. We all have things that we want to change at the beginning of 2021. We all need to realize that 2021 is another chance, not just emotionally or physically, but spiritually. How often are our resolutions that we choose are just regular resolutions? For example, well, this year I'm going to start working out, or this year I'm going to work on me. But we don't think about spiritual resolutions. And I will tell you this year, my resolution is to read my Bible more. I'm an awful reader. You can ask anybody in the church. They all know that. I tell everyone that. And I don't like to read. But for my walk with God, for my spiritual well-being, I need to read my Bible more. And in, 20, in 2020, I just told you it's, it's just been exhausting. The election year that feels like it will never end, it's, uh, even though the election happened, that we still every day are hearing more and more about it. COVID-19 and then individuals having to quarantine, I know that in our church that we've had multiple individuals have to quarantine And since I can remember, I've heard that God is coming back. I've always heard in my life, well, it's coming soon. But we are honestly living in unprecedented times more than ever. We need to understand that we are closer than ever. I'm not going to say that God's coming back in 2021. I don't know. But do you want to take that chance that he is? You read in Mark thirteen thirty four through 37. For the Son of Man is as a man taking, taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. And then in 35, this, I want you to listen to 35 really good. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. But I want you to pay attention to the very first word, watch. We see it, we see this, and we think, we have to think back to when Jesus told Peter to do the same thing in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he fell asleep. And then verse 36, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Right there, it shows you. That's what happened with Peter. And in verse 37, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. 36 and 37, you find, he finds, it says he finds you sleeping, and then it finishes with watch. In three verses, he says watch. We must watch and not sleep as Peter did, because we might miss our chance. In Matthew, Matthew 26, 40, and 41, It says, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you, couldn't you men keep with me, keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Peter did not worry when God told him at the very beginning when I read those verses. Peter did not worry about what God told him because he said, I would rather die. But then in verse 41, it tells him, watch and pray so that you will not fall in temptation because your flesh is weak. We see in verse 69 through 75 of Matthew 26, it says, and that's when he denied him. So before even denying him, God told him, your flesh is weak. You'll fall in temptation. We must pray and watch. But instead, he fell asleep again. Jesus says to Peter, what could ye not watch with one hour? Only one hour. Watch and pray. 
when 2021 rolls in and it's soon, we must watch and pray. We must watch over our spiritual lives, not just ours though, but also our families. We must pray over our families. We must pray over our church. We need to take 2021 as a new chance with our spiritual walk with God. We cannot fall asleep and grow weak in our spiritual walk. Like those verses said, our flesh is weak, so we must keep ourselves strong by doing what God has asked. And as I come to the end of this message, but before I close, I wanted to, I wanted to say that Peter was not the only one that was given chances with Jesus. Rahab, Moses, David, Zacchaeus, and even the thief on the cross were given second chances. It does not matter what you have done, you can receive another chance. I can tell you through experience, you can receive another chance. If you don't go to a church right now, you can receive another chance. He died on the cross to give each of us another chance. And before I pray, I know I've been speaking about 2021 a lot, but if you don't have a church and you need a church, that's why we're here. Even online, if you're in Florida or wherever, that's why we're here. But I'm going to go to prayer. And while I pray, if you could pray with me. Jesus, thank you for this message, God, and touch each of us with the chances that you've given us, but the chances that we can receive in 2021. God, we ask that you bless 2021 for each of us and that our church is touched. And not only our, not only our church that are, is in person, but also our online congregation that's watching. In your name we pray, amen. But I want I want to thank you for joining me, especially me. I'm very nervous, so thank you um, for joining us on this Wednesday night. Uh, also, this Sunday, I've been speaking about chances, so this Sunday is your first chance for 2021. You can come to be with us in person at 11 a.m. Pastor always says that the first and last services of the year are important, so please do not forget in person this Sunday at 11 a.m. Also, if you would like to contact us, the following screens we'll have on we'll have we'll have our address, phone number, and our Facebook page. If you would like to message us on there, please don't forget that starting January second, and that is this coming Saturday, that we're going to start prayer and fasting, and that will be the first week is sweets. So get your sweets in now because for a week you're not going to have any. So thank you for being with us. God bless.